Today, I'll show you how to create this colorful pop art effect. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for today's image in the video description. To start off this effect, we first need to separate our subject from the background. To do that, I'm going to make a selection of her using the Selection Brush tool. Feel free to adjust the size of your paintbrush using the bracket keys on your keyboard, and then you can go ahead and click and drag to make your selection. Remember that if you ever select too much, you can hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then just paint over the area to remove from your selection. Also, make sure to adjust the brush size as you go so that you can get all of the small details included in the selection. There are a couple of tricky areas in the selection with the fingers and with the hoop earring. So just make sure to make your brush nice and small and take your time to get all of those details just right. All right, so now that I have my selection, I'm going to make sure we have the background layer selected and then press Command or Control J to duplicate our subject onto her own layer. Then press Command or Control D to deselect. So now that we have the subject on her own layer, we can add a new color to the background. I'm going to select the rectangle tool, and then I'm going to click and drag a rectangle, and I'll just go ahead and leave this white, and I'll drag it underneath our subject. Next, I'm going to crop this image inward, so grab the crop tool, and I'm going to make this have a very close crop on the top of her head. Then I'll press enter on my keyboard to confirm the crop. So the next thing we're going to do is turn this image into two flat colors. And just to keep things simple, we'll add black and white colors first, and then we can change these two colors later on. So far, the background is pure white. If we continue on with this project, leaving the background white, this is what the final result would look like. You see how the white background blends in with the left side of her body? That's because the left side has a lot of highlights that turned white with this effect. But take a look at this. If I make that side black, we can see her outline so much better. Turning the background black added nice contrast to that side, so I want to make half of the background black like this. To do this, go ahead and select the pen tool. Now, because she's cropped in so closely, I'm going to start the point right here, and then as we turn the color black on that side, you won't be able to see that transition point. I'll continue this selection outside of the photo, and then I'll close it here. Then up in the context toolbar, I'll click on where it says selection. Then I'll grab the paintbrush tool, and make sure that the rectangle is still selected. And now we can paint that area black. Then press Command or Control D to deselect. Okay, with the background finished, we're ready to add the effect to our subject. The first thing I'm going to do is select our subject layer, and then I'm going to duplicate it twice by pressing Command or Control J. We're going to use each of these layers to gradually add more and more of the effect as we go, but for right now, I'm just going to turn off the top two layers and I'll select the last subject layer. To start off this effect, let's go to our adjustments and apply a threshold adjustment. As you can see, this adjustment turns the highlights white and the shadows black. You can change this slider here to show more of the image as black, or change it this direction to turn more of the image white. For this first layer that we're working on, I want to make it so her face looks visible. If you make it too light, you start to lose all of the details of her eyes, her nose, and her mouth. So I'm going to increase this quite a bit to around 62% to keep those details visible. 
I'll close out of this, and then I'm going to set this threshold adjustment layer as a child layer by bringing it down and to the right. Now that we have this good base layer, we're going to turn on the additional layers to add more and more of this effect. So first I'll select the next layer and check it on. And you can see that this is a completely separate layer. I'm going to add a threshold adjustment to this layer, and I'll go ahead and make it a child layer as well. For this layer, I want more of the highlights to be visible. Mainly, I want to be able to see the detail on her headscarf better. So I'm going to lighten this up until we can start to see those details. And I think around 33% looks pretty good for this. But you can see that now we've lost the detail on her face. This is where it gets a little tricky, so stick with me. I want to keep this lightness on only specific areas, like the headscarf and the microphone. I'm going to add a mask to this layer. Then I'm going to click on this mask and I'm going to invert it by pressing Command or Control I. So now this lighter layer is being completely hidden by this black mask. But if I grab my paintbrush tool and paint in white paint, we can bring back that detail that we had. Just make sure that your hardness is set to 100% and so is your flow. Now with white paint, I'm going to paint over the areas like the headscarf that I want to lighten up. I think I liked the darkness that was on this area, so I'm going to switch my color to black paint by pressing X on my keyboard, and then I'll just paint that back over that area. Then I'll switch my color to white again, and I'm going to paint over the microphone. I'll paint over this side of her arm. And I'll paint over the entire microphone stand and her hand. I think it looks good to paint under her neck as well so that we can see the outline of her shirt. And I'm also going to paint over her arm over here. I'm going to bring back a little bit of the black over her bracelets and on this part of her arm here. I'm going to keep the black outline on this side because we have a white background, so I just want to make sure that that all stays visible. And I think her hand looks good. So you can see that because of that mask, we were able to strategically paint on the lighter areas. And I think that looks pretty nice. We're going to do this one more time with our last layer. Let's add a threshold adjustment and make it a child layer. And then I'm really going to brighten this one up. I want to start to bring back some extra details on her shirt and down here on the microphone just to add a little bit more detail. Obviously, this is way too bright for the rest of her, so I'm really going to make sure to only paint this on specific areas. So with the whole group selected, I'm going to press on the mask icon. Then with the mask layer selected, I'll invert this with Command or Control I. Then with my paintbrush set to white paint, I can go ahead and add in a few of those lighter details. I only added a few details here, but I think that that does make a good difference to make sure that the microphone stands out nicely. So now that we have this image looking perfect in black and white, we're ready to add some fun colors to it. I'm just going to close up all of these layers and select the top one. Then going over to our adjustments, I'm going to add a gradient map adjustment. This adjustment applies a color to the shadows, highlights, and midtones of your image. We have no midtones, so I'm going to select this green color stop and then I'll press delete. And now we can change the colors of the shadows and the highlights. So starting with the shadows, I'll select that point, and I'm just going to change this color back to black. Then with the highlights color stop, I can change that color, 
And you can really choose anything for this. I think a lighter color looks pretty nice, just to emphasize that that's the highlights. But you can play around with this and see what color you like for yours. I think I'm going to go with a nice blue color. So now I'll select all of the layers. And you can see what we started with. And here's how it looks now. And there you have it. Now you can make the pop art effect with any photo. If you want to learn more affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description, where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.